subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates it's the holiday season there's festivities functions and families and of course let's not forget weddings life must go on pandemic or not and we're all trying to figure out how the virus fits in with our important social engagements at this time of the year for many people these engagements can be unavoidable and inevitable one approach that several people seem to be taking is hosting parties and functions and weddings by first mandating a negative coronavirus test but one negative test doesn't actually mean that you're negative for coronavirus and this is something that everybody needs to remember especially if we're going to places where we're going to be exposing ourselves to other people who might be in a similar situation as us and especially when we're going to settings where even if we mask and distance we have to take those masks off while eating in this video we'll take a look at how covid testing happens and how to do it safe before meeting people for events my name is sandhya ramesh and this is pure science let's take a step back and examine how the virus infects our bodies it enters our bodies through the nose most typically and then latches on to the body in the airways but if you test a minute after the coronavirus has entered your body or an hour later or in fact even the next day or the day after you would still test negative even though you are now infected this is because the pcr tests that we use they need to manipulate the viral rna into dna rt in rt pcr stands for reverse transcription which is conversion of rna to dna DNA to RNA is transcription. Reverse transcription is used for testing purposes. As most of us know already, RNA has a single strand and DNA like we animals have is double stranded. The coronavirus is an RNA virus which is a little bit more primitive and more basic than DNA. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. This is the process that is used to rapidly make millions to billions of copies of a DNA sample so that it can be amplified in quantity and then studied in greater detail. So, to convert the existing RNA to DNA and then to amplify the DNA to substantial measurable quantity and then study it in detail, the tests need to pick up a large amount of virus. If the quantity of detectable virus is not enough for the test itself to be performed, the test is obviously going to come out negative. So, within the first 3 to 4 days of infection, it is highly likely that a person will test negative. Therefore, if you suspect you've been exposed to someone with the coronavirus and you want to take a test to confirm it, typically you should wait for 4 to 5 days before getting a test because otherwise you would end up with a false negative. even if you do test negative because tests can come negative for so many days before accurately saying that they're positive it is advised that you still quarantine if you suspected exposure and then apart from all of this there are additional factors if you're going to a public place for testing like a hospital or a test clinic or a facility like that during testing as well as after testing you are risking being exposed to other people who might have the virus because they are there for the same reason to get tested so there's a likelihood that you might contract the virus while you're out in the process of getting tested itself or if you're hosting an event and requiring everyone to come after testing negative what could happen is people might take a test 5 to 6 days before the event the test might come negative and they can then subsequently get infected within 2 to 3 days before the event and then turn up there and expose everyone else to the virus all of this is not to say that negative tests are useless they're definitely useful and mandating a negative test before an event can definitely reduce the risk of the virus spreading to the attendees but it does not completely eliminate the risk if you have immunocompromised or older people Even if you test negative even if everybody tests negative you're still putting people at risk and of course the more the number of people are the higher the risk 
And let's remember that the more we learn about long COVID, months and months after infection, even among healthy young adults who are asymptomatic during their infection, the scarier it seems. This is not a virus to be messed around with. And then there's the question of rapid antigen testing. PCR and antigen tests serve slightly different purposes when it comes to epidemiology. PCR takes time. Sometimes it can take even a couple of days, although we do have quick results now, real-time RT-PCR can give results within just a few hours. Antigen testing is similar, where tests look for the presence of an antigen in the body, instead of looking for the entire virus. As many of us might know, an antigen is any foreign substance that is a part of the virus, which the body's immune system recognizes and then immediately mounts a defense against. This antigen, which when it comes to this coronavirus is usually the spike protein, simply acts as a proxy for the virus when it comes to our immune response. And these antigens can be picked up by these tests. Rapid antigen testing, as the name suggests, is very rapid and very quick. You can get results within just about 30 minutes. However, rapid antigen tests have a very high false negative rate, which is why typically the Indian mandate is that if you test negative in, a, in an antigen test, you do immediately take a PCR test to confirm it. Antigen tests also have about 2% false positive rates, which is saying that someone is positive for the virus even when they are not. But we can live with that number in this context. But do remember that if an antigen test says you're negative, you might not necessarily be negative. So how can you actually ensure that you aren't truly infected and there's no virus in your body? Well, simply by getting tested daily. We saw these daily negative tests happening at the White House a lot over the past month or so. After Donald Trump got sick, many others in his very close circuit continued to test negative every day, like Stephen Miller, until one day, bam, they tested positive. Most of us, unfortunately, cannot afford the luxury of testing every day, so it's important to choose when to test and how to behave afterwards depending on what your test results reveal. Any test is great and useful mainly if you're positive because you know what to do immediately after. If you're negative, the tests do not guarantee that you're not infected or that you're not infectious either. What's the difference? When you're infected, the virus has entered your body. You're infected from day one of the virus making contact, whether you show symptoms or not. But you're infectious or contagious once the virus has latched on and multiplied enough for you to start shedding the virus and spreading it to other people. People typically turn infectious two to five days from exposure, about two days before symptom onset, and they can remain infectious or contagious. I'm using the words interchangeably. They can remain so for about 10 to 20 days, depending on the severity of the illness. Typical guidelines, international guidelines and CDC guidelines and what people all over the world typically follow is that if it's been up to 10 days from the onset of symptoms, you are likely not infectious if your symptoms are getting better and you have not had a fever for more than 24 hours. If you have had a very severe case of COVID or a mildly severe case of COVID, which includes breathing difficulty or inability to get out of bed for a couple of days, even if you were isolating at home, you should typically isolate for 20 days after the onset of symptoms. More severe COVID patients tend to remain contagious or infectious for much longer. If you are asymptomatic, the day on which you receive your positive test is considered to be the day on which you're starting to get infectious. So then you isolate accordingly. Of course, a foolproof way is to still get tests every day until you test negative for two consecutive tests 24 hours apart, you're not really considered to be not infectious. A negative PCR is generally a good indicator that you're no longer infectious. So if you are going to a place where you're definitely going to be exposed to a lot of people, more testing is ideally better. However, for many, even after symptoms subside, they can continue to test positive for days or weeks later. This is because the body is still shedding the virus even though these virus 
particles are not viable they cannot infect anyone but they do tend to get picked up on tests so people continue to test positive in that kind of occasional case use your discretions if symptoms are completely gone you're likely not infectious but if you do still choose to stay safe and avoid people that's a great idea now knowing all of this how can we ensure that places where these events are held are safe how can you ensure that you wouldn't catch the virus if you go to meet someone or attend a wedding or are being forcefully dragged into family functions this festival season three things are key masking distancing and ventilation the first two i'm not going to elaborate everybody knows masking and distancing are important but ventilation is extremely important if you're attending an indoor event make sure there's plenty of windows and doors and cross ventilation i like to give the example of a cigarette smoke rule imagine you walk into a closed room and there's a person smoking cigarettes what do you do and how do you ventilate to prevent the smoke from reaching you treat the virus the same way increased ventilation this cigarette smoke rule is a very handy rule to have whether you're indoors outdoors going jogging going events or going to office or everywhere during your daily life while you're trying to keep safe from this virus